Hi Grace Beach Youth, you know this week we're going to be talking about Blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. You know, and it's a really important message that we need to grasp because it allows us to have the freedom to be able to approach God and see him face to face. In Luke 6, Jesus teaches the disciples that they will be known by their fruit. You know, here's an apple tree, you know, and if it has fresh, sweet fruit, you soon know about it. If it's got sour fruit, you'd leave it alone. Jesus says in the same way, our words, our attitudes, our, our way of life, our behaviour can demonstrate the, the fruit, the goodness in our lives. You know, Jesus talks about how it's out of the heart we speak and the words we use describe what is actually in our heart. So if we're using bad words, if we're using grumpy words, angry words, cross words, rude words, that's shown that there's a problem, there's gunk in our lives which is coming out in the words that we speak when we get cross. You know, I don't really see that as good fruit. But if the words that are coming out of our mouths to our parents, to our friends, to our brothers and sisters is good words, is encouragement, is love, is helpful words, is supportive words which build people up. I see that as good fruit. I see that as good things to help be able to help other people grow, help God move in their lives. So we need to ask God's help to make sure that the fruit in our life is good to help other people grow, to help other people feel loved, to feel cherished, to feel joy and hope. You know, let's be people who have good fruit and are known for the fruit by using good words. Okay, so when Jesus is speaking to the crowd and saying, blessed are the pure in heart. Jesus is talking about purity as in not having any imperfections, not being contaminated, not being gunky. He's talking about having integrity. And when he talks about the heart, he's talking about the very core of who we are. You see, in Jesus' day, there was a lot of people called the Pharisees who walked around. They thought they were perfect because they tried to follow the law in their own strength. They try to look perfect, speak perfect, be perfect. But Jesus called them whitewashed tombs because on the outside they looked perfect, but on the inside they had gunky hearts. And Jesus is teaching the people, look, our hearts, the very core, the very motivation of the words we use, our actions, our thoughts, our attitudes, our behaviors, the very heart of that, of who we are, matters most of all and it's that that we're talking about today hey guys so God wants us to have a pure heart now if we represent us by this glass you know God wants us to have a pure heart on the inside but so often we let gunk we let dirt we let impurities into our lives you know it might be by lying to our parents you know here's a bit of soya sauce going in into our into our lives it might be through getting angry with our brother and sisters, there's a bit of coffee essence. It might be by cheating, some hot Tabasco sauce, or it might be by stealing. Here's some, some more hot pepper sauce going in, you know, and, and, and we get our lives full, full of gunk, full of bad attitude, full of rude words, and, and our, just, our hearts just are full of gunk, not very nice on the inside. Now, here's a question. Do you think you would drink this? It would probably make your inside feel very upset and it wouldn't taste very nice. But you know, so often we actually live our lives with this in our heart. You know, some people try and they remove the impurities by fishing around and trying to pull out the impurities in their own strength. Other people think, well, if I just go to church or if I just do this for charity, I sanitise, I clean up my life, add a bit of soap. But you know, that doesn't work either. Still, our heart is full of gunk. You know, we need help. We need to call on Jesus to say, Jesus, I need your help to be pure. And what does God do? God wants to replace that gunk in our heart with his Holy Spirit.
And when he does that, there's a work done in our lives. When he pours out his spirit into our life, he clean, cleanses us from the inside so that we can be pure. Beautiful. Okay, so why is it so important for us to be pure? Well, you know, God is pure. God is holy. God is perfect. And you know, God can't permit sin, can't allow imperfections in us to approach him. He only can have pure and holy vessels come into his presence and so in our own strength in our own humanness we can't approach God but through the Holy Spirit cleansing us through Jesus dying on the cross for our sins we can have our gunk and the imperfections and the sin in our lives cleansed so that we have ultimate clear access to enter into the perfect throne room of God to see Jesus face to face and I tell you guys that is an awesome privilege that you have when you chase after God and have a pure heart you know David in the Bible is one of my heroes you know he didn't get everything right but the Bible tells us that David was a man after God's own heart now when David was a small boy you know, the people in Israel had been complaining, asking for a king. They were wanting to have a king of their very own, like the other nations. And so Saul was anointed king, but, you know, he wasn't a very good king. He didn't chase after God, and God decided that there was going to be a new king. And so he called Samuel to go to the house of Jesse to anoint one of Jesse's sons to be king. And so Jesse brought out son after son after son, starting with the eldest, starting with the strongest, the most macho, the wisest. And every time Jesse brought one of his sons out, Samuel would go, no, Jesse, this isn't the one. Do you have another son? In the natural, Samuel would have looked and he would have seen these powerful, mighty, hunky men and thought, he looks like a king. And when the scrawny shepherd boy David turned up, God spoke to Samuel and said, and, and told him that it was actually, he could see on the inside of David, not the outside. You see, there was something special about David. He had a heart after God. It was through having a relationship with him, worshiping him, knowing him, giving him first place in his life. And that's what David looked to do throughout his whole life. We need to be the same. When we have a heart after God, we chase after the things of God. We want to make sure that our lives are right with God. We want to make sure that we have a pure life, a pure heart, chasing after God, putting God first. That's our challenge this week, to be people after God's own heart, like David.